Hey everyone, welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all how I painted this battle-scarred Chaos Knight. All the techniques you're going to see me use are pretty simple, but I think that the results speak for themselves. So without further ado, let's get started. No matter what model I'm painting, I always tend to start with the base. The base for this model is a 3D printed base with some water effect resin and corkboard glued onto it. It's just a really nice base for a volcanic rock and lava effect. I started off with a black prime and then came in with a makeup brush and did some dry brushing using progressively lighter colors of gray just to help give the rocks a little bit of color. Once I was happy with how the rocks looked, it was time to start on the lava. I start out with a base coat of a bright yellow craft paint just to give the lava that internal heat that we really want it to have. Once we have a nice clean coat of yellow, I came in with a mixture of dry brushing and stippling in orange craft paint, aiming for about 70% coverage. We want to leave some of the yellow to show where the lava is hottest, but the lava is going to be cooling as it's now risen to the surface, so we're going to add in quite a bit more orange to show that change in temperature. Next, we're going to repeat the same process with a red craft paint. We should be doing a little less coverage than we did with the orange as the red is going to be some of the most cooled areas of lava and you can see I'm using a little bit more of a dry brushing technique here. Don't worry if you nick the stone a little bit as there's some lava that would be spilling onto the rocks anyway and overall it gives a little bit of unintentional object source lighting. You can always go back and clean that up if you don't like how it looks. The last layer of our lava effect is going to be a dry brush of a black craft paint. This is just going to give us a little bit of that feel where the lava has cooled to a crust, but as the underlying molten lava shifts, that crust is cracking and reforming, and overall it just adds that little bit of extra detail to the lava that I think really brings the effect together. I put this oil drum into the lava just as an extra little side detail, so we're just going to come and pick that up with some lead belcher from Games Workshop, followed up by a little bit of Balthazar Gold to just pick out some of the details. I don't want to go too crazy on the base details as I don't want them to detract from the night model that I'm going to put on this base. I came in next and painted a layer of gray sear around the rim of the base as we're going to continue this lava effect around the edge. I started with some Eandon yellow contrast paint, just putting it into some random locations to start building the core of my lava effect. Next. I came in with a little bit of Grifthound Orange and filled in any of the spaces that I hadn't covered with the Eand in Yellow. Lastly, I finished up by putting on some Blood Angels Red, keeping that same layering color of Yellow, Red, and Orange, but I'm using Contrast here just to help it blend together a little bit better. Lastly, we're going to come in and apply a layer of Ard Coat Varnish around the entire rim of the base. This is going to be important for our final step on the base, but I'm not going to do that until I've finished the rest of the model and glued it down to the base. To demonstrate the technique that I used on all of the armor panels for the night, I'm going to use this shoulder pad as it's really convenient. I started off with a stipple layer of Gracier using a makeup brush over any of the areas that I wanted to have my knight's primary colors. The stippling pattern leaves a little bit of a texture in the paint, and I think that overall that adds a bit to the effect of this battle-worn, very torn-up Chaos Knight. I decided to break with my normal habit of painting with really dark colors, and instead keep one of these sides with simply a layer of Gracier, and give the other side a layer of Briar Queen Chill. After that, I grabbed one of my makeup brushes, and began stippling in some lead belcher around the edges of the armor panels. This is going to help show where the paint has been chewed away by debris, blasts, and anything else, and just overall give the armor a really nice rough pattern to it. I chose the face mask that had the big horns on it as I just thought it looked really cool, and I decided to give those horns a layer of Saigor Brown just to make them a really nice dark contrast to the otherwise very light color scheme that I was using for this night. Now it's back to the shoulder pad, and I came in and trimmed out all of the metal edges with a layer of Psycorax Bronze. This is one of the lighter bronzes in the Citadel paint range, and I really liked how it played well with the other two lighter colors that I had chosen. Next, I came in with some Warplock Bronze, and just stippled that around any of the areas where I had previously painted on some lead belcher. 
This is going to help reinforce the overall battle scarred look because not only has the paint been chipped away by just the ravages of time, but this Chaos Knight has also been subject to flamers, melta cannons, battle cannons, the humble bolter, and every other type of firepower the Imperium could throw at it, but yet it still marches on in the service of the Dark Gods. Once I was happy with how beat up it looked, it was time to add some patina to our bronze. For that, I came in with some Nihilic Oxide, and just applied that sporadically over anywhere that had the bronze. My goal here was about 50% coverage, as I still really liked how the bronze looked with the other two primary colors of the night, but I still really needed to keep this aged, run-down feel consistent throughout all the pieces. And this partial patina was a really great way to accent the fact that this knight has seen better days. The final touch of grime that I wanted to add was just a light brown wash over the armor panels. I chose brown rather than black as it would stand out a little bit better against the very light colors that I had chosen for the armor panels, and it allowed me to add this little light oily, grimy streaking pattern that I thought really worked well. You could also go with a black wash for a more soot feel, but I felt that the brown matched a little bit better with the very light color scheme that I had chosen. I also applied that brown wash over all the other metal sections of the arms and legs for the night and a little bit of the interior casing, just to help give it that overall aged feel. You can always go more in detail with these sections of the nights, there's so many different little panels, cables, and other little knickknacks to add some color to. But I decided to limit myself to just the lead belcher and bronze with a little bit of the patina on the bronze just to keep things nice and simple and let the armor panels do most of the talking for this model and really let that be the showcase of how much action this knight has really seen. With the knight painted, I glued the legs down to the base and now it's time to get back to that final step I mentioned earlier along the rim. We're going to grab some Morden Earth and apply that around the entirety of the rim of the base and let that crack overnight. Once it's dry, it gives us this really cool cracked dried lava pattern that I use for the bases of all my Chaos models. I just think it's a really cool little nifty effect, and it ties the base and the rim together a little bit more intricately than just painting the entire rim a solid color. And here you can see the knight in its fully assembled, battle-scarred glory. I was really happy with how this piece turned out, and I was a little bit surprised at how simple it was to get this really nice battle-worn effect. There are other things you could use to get this weathered effect, such as weathering powders, chipping medium, latex masking fluid, or hairspray, but I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could get this effect with just a brush. If you liked this tutorial, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our future projects. If there's anything you'd like to see me tackle, Leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.